on the dating market because it is a market you can lose your value you can lose your value if you are seen to be dating and dating and dating and dating all these different men when do you have time to be by yourself when do you have time to heal when do you have time to look in the mirror and be like maybe it's me and i feel like when you're beautiful and you get man like man are always there there's always someone trying to take you out there's always someone trying to date you it stops you from taking a look in the mirror and realizing that you are the problem okay yes Lori harvey do it and the reason why a lot of women are backing Lori harvey is because of Lori harvey is playing the games that men play and seemingly getting away with it she's doing what most men do and doing what most women can't the reason why Lori harvey is being praised is because she's at like a lady and thinking like a man the bar is in hell because of you what, what are we tolerating as a collective as women what are we tolerating the bar is low so when we see someone like Lori Harvey who is being flown out these guys are taking her out on Valentine's Day buying her gifts for her birthday she's getting flued out she's living that luxury life these guys are treating her what it appears to be like a queen so women are looking at that and feeling like yo Lori Harvey is winning and that's cool if that's your MO that's what you feel is success i don't feel like what laurie harvey is doing is winning hey guys welcome back to my channel hope you guys are doing well so today we are here to talk about the one the only the myth the legend miss laurie harvey baby and the reason why i wanted to make this is because i've been seeing so much one-sided narratives one-sided conversations about this especially coming from women we all know that the men are gonna say what they want to say okay but i've been seeing a lot of like one-sided you know go team Lori like I want to be like her she is like living my dream life and so today I decided to bring back my case studies every once in a while I will do a case study on a celebrity or a person that fits a topic that I want to talk about mind you this is not necessarily just about Lori Harvey I don't know the girl you don't know the girl I am not a hater for those of you who are new to this channel two years ago I think I made a video on February and energy where I was praising Lori Harvey's qualities and saying how much I admire her as a person. Okay guys before we get into the video I want to talk to you guys about your skin. I don't know about you guys but whenever I'm on social media and I see all these skincare routines I get so overwhelmed with how many products they use and which product is the product that actually works and how long the routine is and I'm a simple babe like give me three products that work for my skin and let me live. So I've been seeing this particular brand everywhere so i thought let me give it a go so skin and me is a personalized skincare brand designed by dermatologists made just for your skin so you tell them your problems and your concerns and they will formulate a treatment plan to target those areas so i started a free consultation online and i gave them as much information about my skin and my problem areas my particular problem areas are my hyperpigmentation and my dark spots on my cheeks which seem to be fading by using Skin and Me. So I was actually able to upload three photos of my skin, which I felt was incredibly personalized. And in no time, my package was arriving at my door ready to use. So you get two cleansers, two moisturizers, and a daily doser with my name on it. How cool is that? I've been using these products daily for about two and a half weeks. And I have definitely seen a significant difference with my skin especially my dark spots they just seem to be fading away which is amazing so the ingredients in my formula will change monthly and the dermatology team will email me to keep me up to date on my personalized treatment plan and what i can expect each step of the way it's honestly like having a personal dermatologist in your pocket at your beck and call which is absolutely amazing where they do that so everyone's always asking me about my skincare routine and i'm always quite apprehensive to share because i'm a simple babe i like to keep things really simple i don't like too many products because i don't know which product is actually targeting the area and actually working for me and i personally don't like to mix skincare brands i like to use one brand at a time so if you want to try out skin and me and get your own own personalized skincare routine sent to you monthly tap the link in my description box below and use my code brini to get your first daily dose for just three pound fifty which is usually 24.99 which is a massive saving 
for you to try out. So with all of that said, let's jump straight back into the video. This was due to time where she was relatively low key. She had had dating rumors out there, but nothing had really been confirmed. But anyway, in that video, I was just like, you know, praising her for some of the qualities that I feel like she had, which is why I felt like she was desired by men. Okay. So that's just a disclaimer out there. I do not hate Lori Harvey. I follow her on Instagram. I love looking at her. I think she's a beautiful person. So this is not a Lori Lori Harvey hate train. This is just for us to, this is not even about Lori, it's about you. Obviously this channel is about you, it's not about Lori Harvey, like it's about you, it's about us, it's about us real women and when I say real women I mean not celebrities, we're not celebrities, we're, we're normal average working women, okay, we're not celebrities and I think with social media we almost feel like we're on the same levels as celebrities. Just because we have the same social media platforms does not make us celebrities. Our lives are not the same. The things that they can get away with, the average person cannot get away with it, okay? Lori Harvey is a very unique person, okay? She's extremely unique. Not only is she a celebrity, she comes from a well-known family. She has access, she's beautiful. She's just, she's a celebrity, okay? She is a celebrity. And so I want to make that distinction because what I found with women is that women like to gather around a particular female. It's almost like in Mean Girls, right? Women like to gather around a particular female and almost live vicariously through her. So a lot of women are saying, you know, Lori Harvey is living my dream life. She's goals. But really, like, when we think about it, what is she winning? What is the dream life? What is this dream life that you are aspiring to have? Dating your crush? Dating guys that you find particularly handsome? What is she really doing? So the narrative at the moment that I'm trying to find a balance to is, you know, she's 26 years old, she's dating how young people are supposed to date. And I'm hearing this from older women as well. I'm hearing this from young women. People are saying, what is she doing? She's not doing anything illegal. She's not doing anything bad. She's just dating. But the problem that I find is she's not just dating them. She's not just dating these men. She's actually exclusive with them. She's getting into relationships with them. Her and Dams and Idris aren't dating they're in a relationship do you guys not like see there's a difference and i see how this may have an appeal to certain women who can't even get a text back from their crush or the girls that have guys texting them wyd what are you doing at 2 a.m in the morning getting those are you up texts right i understand for those type of people what Lori harvey may be doing is almost a win for women like for the women who as far as they will get from a, a guy is, you know, Netflix and chill, can I come over? If you've only ever been a booty call, I would understand why you think this is a win, but it's not a win. And we all know that the bar is in hell because of women, right? And I talked about that in my Young Miami video. The bar is in hell because of you. What, what are we tolerating as a collective, as women? What are we tolerating? The bar is low. So when we see someone like Lori Harvey, who is like being flown out, these guys are uh, taking her out on Valentine's Day, buying her gifts for her birthday. She's getting flewed out, she's living that luxury life. These guys are treating her what it appears to be like a queen. So women are looking at that and feeling like, yo, Lori Harvey is winning. She's a beautiful girl. She's young. She gets to date all the men that I would love to date. And that's cool. If that's your MO, if that's what you feel is success, that is cool for you. But I think for women who are intentional about meeting the right person and actually locking it down and getting married, I personally, or speaking for myself, I don't feel like what Lori Harvey is doing is winning to me personally. And like I said, I'm not being a hater. Like, guys are everywhere. It's not hard to get somebody. It's not hard to get a celebrity. I'm in that industry. It's not hard to get these guys. When you've got blue ticks in your DMs, it's not difficult to get guys, is what I'm saying, right? But if your intention is to lock it down, to be official with someone, actually build a future with them, again, I say Lori Harvey is not winning. And back to what I was saying, she's not just dating these men. Dating men is like, you know, going out on dates, like talking to these people. This girl is actually becoming Instagram official with these men, all right? We're in a new age, so it doesn't have to be like changing your Facebook status in the relationship for you to know that somebody is in a relationship. If a girl posts a picture of a guy on her Instagram, it is official. She's in a relationship with these guys. And how do we know it's exclusive? Because if these guys were to be seen out with another woman, they'll be classified as cheating. 
We would get on the internet and say that is cheating. Lori Harvey is official with these men. And that's what I want to talk about. If Lori Harvey was being casually seen out with this guy, that guy, or whatever, can I just say, right? There are ways for celebrities or famous people to date and nobody has any idea about it. They're not going to public places. They're not being packed by the paparazzi. If you guys watched Meghan and Harry, they dated for a while without nobody even knowing, right? And if you watch Kim Kardashian's interview with Andy Martinez, she was even saying that the way that she dates is like behind closed doors. So it'll be like a friend of a friend introduces and it would be inside the house, right? Laurie Harvey knows what she's doing when she's being seen publicly with these men. So it's not just dating. I want you guys to really understand it's not just dating okay so quickly we're gonna go through her dating history and i'm not doing this to you know shame her i understand that many women have just as many relationships or dating experiences with men but they're not famous and so no one really judges apart from their friends and family but however Lori harvey is a public figure if you're a public figure you have to expect to be talked about publicly but i'm not here to judge her just to go through her history to kind of build upon what i'm actually talking about but before i get into that I want to say something about judging right because people like to throw out the whole stop judging you're shaming you're doing this you're doing that blah 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 and I want you guys to know that I am very judgmental yeah you can't shame me with that anymore yeah Tell me something else I don't know. No, I will say I judge everything. Why? Because that's how I stay safe. Nobody's gonna sit here and act they don't judge. If you was on a tube or, or the train or the underground and someone came and sat next to you and they stunk, you're judging that person. Don't try and act all high and mighty. Everyone judges how we keep safe, right? I look at situations and celebrities and I judge because I'm like, I don't want that for my life. This is what I'm not going to do. This is what I'm going to do. That's what a judgment is, right? But condemnation is saying that person is wrong. They should be this. They should be that. They should be that. That's not what we're doing. We're not condemning anybody around here. I will judge, right? And those of you who say, well, Christians, you're not supposed to judge. No, we are supposed to judge. The Bible says to judge righteously. And what that means is if you have a look in your own eye, don't try and take out the speck in someone else. I don't be a hypocrite. If I was doing what Laurie Harvey is doing, I would have no grounds to stand on. And if I'm ever being a hypocrite, please call me out. That's what we're here for. And women need to start judging women. That's the problem. That's why there's no shame in our community. You guys are not judging anymore. You're like, oh, let everyone do what they want to do. No, no. Because as a collective as women, if we say we love each other, we're not going to see our friend walking into the middle of traffic and not try and save her. This is what I've noticed, right? This is probably like a little tangent, but I have to say it. The reason why some women don't like to hear the truth is because they don't want to hear the truth they don't want it so if you say anything that goes against what they perceive is right in their own eyes even though deep down in their gut they know it's wrong they will hate you right i've seen it in girlfriend relationships i mean we do it if i am speaking to a friend and i'm trying to advise her but i can tell there's a resistance there she's not trying to hear do you know what i wouldn't keep going i'm gonna pull back and then be like Okay, she's not ready. Or if we're having a certain conversation and she's saying, oh yeah, but I know, yeah, but I, I know, I'm, I'm not. And I'm just like, okay. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, you're being stupid. Like, you're being dumb. Yeah, you are for sure. But the reason why women don't like to hear the truth is because they don't like to hear the truth. They don't want truth, right? They want people to justify and to pat them on the back and say, sis, you're doing well. Yes, sis. Yes, Lori Harvey, do it. And the reason why a lot of women are backing Lori Harvey is because Lori Harvey is playing the games that men play and seemingly getting away with it, right? And I spoke about in the Young Miami video that when women play men's games, they always lose, right? The reason why Lori Harvey is being praised is because she's acting like a lady and thinking like a man which she's not actually thinking like a man she's acting like a man and she's getting away with it or so it appears and that's what i kind of want to break down in this video is she really winning is she really getting away with what these guys these trash guys would do right and i think for a lot of women i speak about this time and time again that a lot of women you just want revenge right you want to do what was done to you and when everyone takes an eye for an eye the world will literally go blind so i don't believe in playing games i don't believe in playing a man's game because i have found in my own life from experience with other people when you play that game when you try and act like them you lose out all the time there's no winning when you're playing the man's game and the best thing that we can do as women is to be women classy dignified 
respectable women. That's how you win the game, okay? Let the dogs go after the dogs. If he's a dog, if he hurt you, let him go after the other women that's gonna hurt him. Let the savages go over the savages. But we're gonna be classy women, right? We're gonna be respectable women and we're going to attract classy and respectable men. You think if you're gonna be out here playing these games that you're not also gonna meet guys that are also playing the same games as you, right? You wanna act like a dog, right? You wanna act like a B-I-T-C-H? Be prepared to meet a dog. Put that on the t-shirt. So the first guy that we have seen Laurie go public with is a guy called Memphis, who is a football player. I think they met in 2016 and he actually proposed and they got engaged. Laurie Harvey's parents were very, very happy. They thought that this man was a good man. I believe she was 20 years old at the time. And I remember her saying, you know, when it's right, why wait? And I feel like that Laurie Harvey was probably the most innocent Laurie Harvey. And do I believe in getting married so young? I don't know. I know that wasn't my story and I'm glad it wasn't my story because I definitely probably would be divorced. However, I do feel like there's some people that are mature enough to get married at a young age. So I don't think that people should discourage it and I don't think people should say, oh, it's too young. Back in the day, people were getting married at 16. Like women got married early. That's just how it was, you know? So I don't think if she got married at 20 years old, it would have been a bad thing as long as it was the right person, right? I don't know why they broke up, but they broke up. The next person she got seen publicly out with was Trey Songs, okay? And I think during that time was when Meek Mill made the song, I've got Laurie Harvey on my wish list. And I'll be honest with you guys, I had no idea who Laurie Harvey was until Meek Mill made that song. So Meek Mill, I feel like, created a monster I'm saying no Meek Mill actually created this hype around or he initiated this hype around Lori Harvey so she started dating Trey Songs in 2018 and she celebrated her 22nd birthday with Trey Songs in 2019 and you will see that these birthdays become a pattern in her dating history so she was Instagram official with Trey songs. They had pictures up together. They weren't shying away from it. I don't know why they broke up, but I think maybe it's because she knew that he was expecting a baby on the way. I don't know. I don't, I don't really care why they broke up, but they broke up. And I am assuming she broke up with him. After that, she was linked to Lewis Hamilton. They were reportedly spotted making out. I don't know if that was a dating situation. I don't think it was that long. So I'm assuming it was a dating situation that also happened in 2019. So after Trey songs, she didn't waste no time to move on to Lewis Hamilton. The next person she was probably seen with was Justin Combs, Diddy's son. Nobody has confirmed or denied it, but I do remember when Laurie Harvey was in the car with Trey Songs and she ducked Justin Combs along with Future made a joke about her not ducking. You ducked too late. I see you. I like that. It's cute. Cute. Keep it up. So it made it seem like she was in a situation with Justin Combs. I don't know how long that lasted. I don't know if it was an official relationship or if they were dating. Nobody knows. But she was linked to Justin Combs, Diddy's son. Then in July 2019, she was linked to Diddy. The one and only Diddy, Puffy, P. Diddy. Brother, love. I find it so interesting when these guys want to reform their image of being a player and just try and act like they just want to love the world. No, love one woman. But this one, I feel like was an actual public relationship. They were not trying to hide their relationship. They were vacationing together. Diddy was even on vacation with the family. Like they were mingling, they were together. She was with Diddy, right? That age difference is insane. Everyone knows P. Diddy is not ready to settle down. It's also really uncomfortable that Lori Harvey was also saying rest in peace to Kim Porter just months before when she passed away. And now she's in a relationship with Diddy, which I find very trifling. And let's not try and just like brush over it. Like that's weird. And that age difference is disgusting on Diddy's part, right? And I know Steve Harvey was uncomfortable with someone his age dating their daughter. I know he was uncomfortable, but I guess when you're a billionaire, you do what you want in that industry. And then still in 2019, at the end of 2019, she was linked to the F boys of all F boys, Mr. Future himself. And he was posting her, she was posting him. Again, around her birthday, he flew her to Jamaica with all of her friends and they were taking pictures together. They were clearly in a relationship. They were clearly official together. And and then 
when they broke up. I think I've seen a pattern here, right? Shortly after him, she was linked to Akon's brother, Boo, who seems to get all the women that he wants. I've got more attractiveness in my big toe than him. I guess his personal preference, he must have some kind of charisma that all these women like, like Tracy Ellis Ross, like, I don't know. She was in a long-term relationship with him. Anyway, him and Laurie Harvey were spotted making that in a club. It was probably like a rebound situation, but this kind of exclusivity that a lot of women like to think that Laurie Harvey has is kind of shattering for me at the moment because I did kind of feel like she had this like elusive like you know move in silence don't talk about what you're doing and she still does that however all of these public sightings aren't looking good they're not they're just not and I feel like a lot of people especially women are very biased if another celebrity that they don't like was moving the same way that Laurie Harvey was moving I feel like they would call her all kinds of names but because Laurie Harvey comes across very innocently. She doesn't get painted in the same brush. I'll get into a little bit later. So then after all of those string of failed relationships, she popped on the scene with the Michael B. Jordan and Laurie Harvey's rep skyrocketed like everybody was like yeah price went all the way up like that was a link up that nobody was expecting but made so much sense a bit too much sense so much so that people started to accuse them of having a business relationship it didn't seem genuine for some people i don't know i don't think it was a business relationship i think it was a relationship that made sense they were attracted to each other they liked each other or loved each other as they were declaring on social media but i think it all also made sense for the business so I think it was a win-win situation all round so that was I think January 20 21 they became Instagram official again she's not dating these men she is in a relationship with these men and then they broke up in June 2022 and people are saying that she broke up with him other people are saying that he broke up with her I'll get a bit a little bit more into it a little bit later but people are saying that she didn't want to settle down that's why Michael B Jordan broke up I heard that Michael B Jordan said that she was you know always on her phone very like defensive and didn't really have anything to talk about the fact that she deleted all the photos first shows that she was the one that was hurt the most in a sense and she was like throwing subliminal messages and the family kind of came together and was also shading him as well he never said anything and I don't think he cheated he doesn't strike me as that type of guy but nobody said anything nobody knows why they broke up it could have been him it could have been her it could have been both of them but they broke up ultimately and as of this year and as of this video if you're probably watching in the future you'll probably know that they broke up obviously but as of this year they started dating last year in December they were sported together she's now dating an actor Damson Idris and obviously I'm from the UK you all know who Damson Idris is but he isn't that well known he's up and coming but he's not super well known to everybody but I think the girls that know know and they find him very attractive personally not my type however I can still see the appeal especially American girls love British guys accents and all that kind of stuff they feel like all black men in the UK are like um, Idris Elba and they're in for a shot but it's fine I'll let you guys have your fantasy and so yeah so up to this point she's now in a new relationship with Damson Idris. Men are clowning Damson because they feel like he thinks that he's going to be around for a long time. However, they feel like he's just another notch on her belt. A lot of people are saying this one is definitely a business relationship. Not to mention there's a rumour out there. Wow, this sounds like a celebrity gossip channel. It is not that at all. However, there's a rumour out there that she makes all her guys sign NDAs. That's why no one talks about her. I don't believe that, but we move. Anyway, so that was her relationship history that we know of. We don't know how many other guys were in between but from the year of 2018 to 2023 that's eight different relationships relationships okay not dating relationships so my question is sis what's going on why are they not lasting what do you want do you even know what you're looking for like what's the what's the point in all these relationships and obviously not to compare myself to Dory Harvey I've been in one serious relationship and I am how old 31. I'm 31 and I've been in one serious relationship in my whole life and I'm not saying that's a standard but I just don't understand becoming official with someone that you don't see yourself actually committing to and I want to know why is she picking 
these men. And I wonder if she's learning the lesson from guy to guy. Like, I want to know what is her intention? What is her intention with publicly dating all these different types of celebrity men? Because that's what they are. She's not dating average guys, she's dating celebrity men. They all have something. And I'm starting to question, like, we are making up our own assumptions about who Lori Harvey is. And again, this video also is another assumption. I don't know the girl could also be completely wrong. But I feel like the assumptions that most women have about Lori Harvey, down to all the TikToks that I've been seeing about her, I think millions of women believe that she's actually winning. She's doing what most men do and doing what most women can't. And I think that's the appeal for a lot of women, that they see Lori Harvey as an example to follow. And I think this video is really about questioning, is that true? Should she be used as an example. Lori Harvey is entitled to live her life how she wants to. My only issue with public figures like this is that women start to, like I said at the beginning, live vicariously through them. They actually look at them as role models and examples and things that they want to do with their life. But I don't want you guys to follow someone that doesn't know what they're doing. I know it seems like she knows what she's doing. I don't think she knows what she's doing. And the reason why I know that is because when people ask her in interviews, the answers that she gives to me as a person that is analytical and someone that thinks deeply. I don't think Lori Harvey is thinking deeply about any of these situations. I think she understands the power of the media and I think she understands the power of silence. It's almost the same as Beyonce. Beyonce doesn't say anything but the world in her silence has created this image of her that's even larger than her. I feel like Beyonce's image is larger than her. I also feel like Lori Harvey's image is larger than her. I'm not hating or anything but I'm a good judge of character. I personally don't see any think fun or if I was a man I don't think she could sustain my interest for a long time I don't see her as someone that is intellectual not saying that she's dumb I just don't see her as an intellectual I don't see her as someone that can have conversations about everything I don't see her as someone that would go out of her way to you know do this and do that and show her man love as much as she likes to receive the love and I understand the generation that we're in you guys want that you guys don't want love you want romance you want everything to be given to you and I understand that I made a video about that go watch that however I'm starting to question like does Lori Harvey have a fear of being alone is she displaying signs of daddy issues we know that Steve Harvey is not her real dad right that's the front that's the cover up right I'm not saying it's a bad thing I love that Steve Harvey stepped in and you no know, decided to raise her as his own daughter but she has a dad and we don't know what that relationship is like so there may be underlying daddy issues going on these are speculations again also like I don't know if she knows what she wants I really thought that the Michael B. Jordan situation was going to be something long term but when I heard that she didn't want to settle down I feel like that's a red flag because why are you dating? Why are you dating? Why are you in a relationship with someone? I don't get this. Why are you in relationships with people if you are not ready to be serious? That's man or woman. Why are you getting into relationships? A relationship is a commitment. It's supposed to go somewhere. It's not supposed to just be there. If you want to do that just date. Date. Be open casually. Don't try and lock people down under false pretenses and they'll be like you know what I actually i'm only 25 i'm a baby girl i've got most of my life to live then don't be in a relationship be single babe seriously another thing that i have to wonder is is she just taking advantage of her attractiveness is she just taking advantage of the fact that men desire her is she just taking advantage of that right and so this is some of the things that i've been considering like what is really the deal we know the picture that everyone wants to paint of Lori harvey being a city girl like her just being a savage but is that really what's going on deep inside and and so I have a few clips from the mouth of Lori Harvey because we don't want to misquote her. We don't want to take it out of context, but this is what she had to say. I'm very much in a space right now where I'm not doing anything that's going to compromise my peace and happiness. So I think just taking control, t making sure you like maintain your power, don't give your power away to anybody. That I feel like is the key to like truly being happy in or out of a relationship. She said, maintain your power and don't give it away. To me, this seems like a game, right? It's a power play. Men do it all the time. It's a game of play or be played. And Lori Harvey does not look like she wants to be played. And that's most of us. Most of us don't want to be played. And to be honest, I will say that I have participated in these games playing whereby I'm going to hurt you before you hurt me. Like, I'm not going to be the one being played. No, because I was moving from a place of ego and not openness, not my heart. I was trying to play games with my head, think like a man, right? But I wasn't in touch with my heart. So like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna date you. Like, we'll go out and stuff like that. But 
Like, if I see any signs, like, I'm going to drop you like a hot potato because you're not about to play me. If you even look like you're losing interest, if you even look like you're not showing me enough attention, I'm going to drop you like a hot potato first. Even if you already had any plans to break up with me, I'm going to break up with you. I'm going to dump you first. And so it's a power move. Like, let's just call it what it is. It's a power move so that you don't get hurt. And it's the same things that F-boys do. And as much as there is F-boys, there are also F-girls out there. Whether Lori Harvey is one is yet to be determined. So Lori Harvey also said, remember, you are the prize. And like, obviously, I've said this years ago, but she's correct. Just remember that you're the prize always. Say that one more time. Just remember (laughs) that you are the prize. Yes. That's like his golden... Slogan for me. Yeah. And so. what does that mean for you in relationships when you're like, I'm the prize? What does that mean? It just means not compromising like my values, my happiness, my peace, not settling for less than what I know I deserve, yes. and not being afraid to walk away from a situation if it's like no longer serving me. I really do believe in not compromising on your values. You shouldn't compromise on your values. You should not compromise on your deal breakers, right? You should not compromise on cheating. You should not compromise on abuse of any kind. You should not compromise, yeah, abuse, cheating, any form of abuse, you should not compromise on at all. She talks about not compromising on her happiness, which I kind of have a problem with because in any relationship, if you're going into a relationship thinking that you're not going to have to compromise your happiness from time to time, you're in for a rude awakening because there's going to be times in your relationship that you're not going to be happy because you've had to prioritize that person over yourself now don't get me wrong should the relationship consist of you constantly jeopardizing your happiness absolutely not it should be a game of give and take right not game but it should be reciprocity right and if you're giving to him and he's giving to you nobody should be ended up dry but the problem with a lot of women is that we over give we over commit we do way too much and we rarely get a drop back in return that's an unequal relationship and that's an unstable relationship and any relationship is unstable or one-sided is going to crumble so i definitely believe in you know not compromising your happiness in a relationship however there are going to be times when you're not going to be happy or you're going to keep on walking away you keep on walking away when you're not happy you're going to be single she talks about not being afraid to walk away from a relationship that's no longer serving her and i think a few years ago i would have been like yeah i agree like yeah be prepared to walk away but like i said be prepared to walk away if there's abuse prepared to walk away if there's cheating these things are deal breakers and you can name more on that whatever your deal breakers are are your deal breakers and if that means you walk away from every relationship then so be it however i think this attitude of okay this is no longer serving me this is beneath me i deserve a lot more than this and this and this and none of the deal breakers are being challenged you need to stop you need to check yourself and check your attitude and your ego at the door because there's no space for ego in a relationship there's no space for that kind of attitude in a a successful healthy relationship relationships are for humble people you can't keep walking away when something no longer serves you and again i used to have the attitude when i was in my last relationship i literally got up and left now i'm not dealing with this please i leave his house drive home done i'm not dealing with this. this this is dead you do you think I am? You think I'm a dickhead? Like, that used to be my attitude. Do you think I'm a dickhead? Like, okay, yeah, bet. Like, you would not see me. And I remember he sat me down one time and he was like, listen, if you do that one more time, if you get up and leave, because obviously I always come back. <laughs> oh, I would always apologize and say sorry, whatever. But he was like, if you do that again, this relationship is over. And my sister's husband said the same thing about my sister, because I don't know something about us. We literally have that, like, I'm not dealing with this. We'll literally get in our car and just drive. We'll just, we'll leave. We like to leave. And my sister's husband even said the same thing to her. Like, if you do that again, it's not going to work out and so when he told me that it forced me to sit down and work it out talk about it i had a tendency of just shutting down i'd either shut down physically or I'd just leave i didn't want to work on it i didn't want to talk about it i felt like i was above it and that's pride and that's ego and if you want a healthy relationship that is not the way to go trust me on that one and so walking away from something that may be compromising you and your values and your and your joy is a good thing but i feel like the time that you shouldn't compromise is before you get into a relationship why do you have to commit to someone get into an official relationship with someone and then have to walk away once you're in it like does that make sense like is this adding up the time for you not to compromise is while you're dating you're seeing the red flags you're trying to get to know a person if it's not working out that's the time to walk away why get into a full-blown relationship and then decide oh i'm compromising my happiness that means you're not vetting correctly that means you're jumping into relationships too quickly and obviously i went through laurie harvey's timeline those relationships were back to back when are you spending time by yourself and when are you healing when do you have time to be by yourself when do you have time to heal when do you have time to look in the mirror and be like 
like, maybe it's me. And I feel like when you're beautiful and you get man, like man are always there. There's always someone trying to take you out. There's always someone trying to date you. It stops you from like, taking a look in the mirror and realizing that you are the problem, okay? It takes the time away. And that's why I advise everyone to go through a season of singleness where they actually start working on themselves. They're actually looking themselves in the eye and being real with themselves. Because it's only then will you be able to see the red flags before you enter. Stop getting into relationships and then seeing the red flags. Shine your eye. Open your eyes. Look. Observe. Take time. Don't get into relationships with anyone. Do you don't see yourself worry. To me, saying someone is my man, my man, my man. Mommy, 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 mommy. Is serious it means a lot to me introducing someone to my family means a lot why doesn't it mean a lot to you guys i'm not saying you guys but those of you doesn't you just want to be this guy this guy this guy to me it baffles me it's not logical it makes no sense i might be too deep or too logical for my own good however i'm not entering a relationship unless this person checks all my boxes yeah i'm willing to compromise on you know certain things color of your skin you know maybe height as long as you're but i'm joking um like certain minor preferences I'm willing to compromise on but standards expectations deal breakers those three things if you're not checking those boxes i'm not going to expect you to change whilst we lock it in and the problem is and where a lot of people go wrong is that you're trying to work out your differences in the relationship it's too late you guys are already attached you already made a commitment to each other you're trying to work out your differences the time to work out your differences was outside of the relationship it's almost like you know a woman that may be having doubts or whatever but she's engaged so she wants to so call off the wedding but she's really locked in it's too late like it's not too late you still can but it's i mean when i say it's too late it means it's gonna be harder right so if you're trying to change someone while you're in the relationship with them that's where the relationship becomes toxic because you should have seen who this person was before you got into a relationship you should have accepted them from the jump don't get in trying to change them and men and women do this a lot in different ways men get into relationships with women that maybe it's not adding up everything's not adding up but she's beautiful i can't let this one go she stunning like i want her she's my crush i need this girl so they may overlook this kind of case in point with devon franklin and megan good he wanted this woman is like megan good for goodness sake right how can i pass that up and she wants me right women on the other hand get into relationships with guys that let's say they are cheaters they've shown themselves to be disloyal they've shown themselves to be inconsistent they've shown themselves to not want to be married but women will get into relationships with these men in hopes that maybe i could change him maybe if I get with him he'll change his mind maybe if I show him that I'm a good woman then maybe he might just change his mind about me and ultimately it doesn't work you can't change anyone that's what we mean when you say you can't change anyone you need to accept them for who they are that they'll never change because when you get into a relationship you start putting on this pressure and the pressure comes from you not accepting them so it's like accept me no change accept me no change and that is like uh, uh, that's toxic healthy relationship says I know who you are and I accept you fully the other person says I know who you are and I accept you fully. Even if you do change, I love you and I'm committed to this. However, the time to do the walking away is outside of the relationship not inside the relationship but don't get me wrong you always have the opportunity to walk away even if the, if the person changes and you're like I didn't see that in them because sometimes we are blind sometimes we do think that we know but we don't know and we don't know what we don't know so I'm not saying that relationships can't go wrong even if they are checking the boxes and in that point definitely be willing to walk away but I find that with people like Lori when you move too fast you miss red flags and you also miss whether you have a genuine connection or if it's just lust and lust doesn't just have to be sexual if you just be like you lust after them with your eyes like they're just so beautiful this guy has just got so much money this guy is just you know is so popular this girl is just so whatever it's just lust you don't even know the person do you even like them do you really know them or are you in love with the idea a lot of people want to you know lock someone down and then be honest about who they are whilst they've locked them down and that is so unfair if you know that you're not ready to be in a relationship tell them from the jump don't get in a relationship with them and then be like you know what i'm not ready be single the arena for those people who are not ready is called single so prepare yourself to get ready stop using people or just wanting to be taken out on dates with guys for the girls and girls for the guys if you're not ready to be serious like stop wasting people's time let's be intentional about this so you gotta be honest about where you're at and what you want and again i don't know if this is true but i heard that michael b jordan wanted to settle down but laurie didn't and people were saying she's 25 why should she and i agree but when you date someone that is 10 years older 
don't expect them to be in a different walk of life. If you want to be a city girl, date city boys. If you want to be a lover girl, date lover guys. The crisscross, this creates issues. Lori Harvey's a city girl. Michael B. Jordan strikes me as someone that wants to settle down. I may be wrong, but he strikes me as that. But I don't know. I just feel like Lori knew what he wanted, but wasn't willing to give it to him. And I don't know. I might be wrong, but I just feel like she played him. I feel like she played him. But I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't know the situation. But from the outside, it looks like she played him. But people were saying that the reason why they broke up is because he wasn't over his ex. And the reason why I don't believe that is because now they're broken up, wouldn't he go back to his ex? If that was the case, wouldn't he be with his ex right now? He's not. He's moved on to some other model, some other woman. So I don't know what is true, but I feel like her relationship with Michael B. Jordan probably made the most sense. And if she is, you know, dumping these men thinking that she can do better, I don't see Laurie Harvey with someone better than Michael B. Jordan. I just don't see it. We don't know the dynamic. Everything that looks good doesn't mean it's good. They could be incompatible in so many different ways. But like I said, they shouldn't have committed to, to themselves, to a relationship. They knew that already. They were feeling that. Locking someone in a relationship doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the person. It doesn't make them more serious. It just makes them in a relationship. It's not, no different. It's like men that are cheating before marriage. Making them a husband is not going to make them stop cheating. It's going to make them a cheating husband. That's all. And again, I have to ask the question, like, is Lori learning the lessons from these relationships? Or is she just jumping from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship? Is she learning the lessons? Is she learning about herself? Is she discovering more of like what she wants? But that's why I feel like you should be single to do that. You don't have to be in a relationship to know what you want. You should know what you want before you get there. And I don't know if Lori Harvey wants to get married. She never mentioned it. So she might be living her city girl life. And so if that's the case, maybe her and Damson Idris is more suited because obviously I live in the UK, the industry is small. She doesn't strike me as someone that wants to settle down and get married. And I personally don't trust anyone that is at the beginning of, or at the height or the beginning of their career to lock it down. So I don't know what that is about. Maybe they're just having fun. If they're just having fun, then they like it. I love it, you know? But I don't see, I don't see that lasting. And so what I want to talk about really is the dangers of this type of lifestyle. Let's assume, because I don't want to have to keep on making these disclaimers. Let's assume that Lori Harvey is what everyone's portraying her out to be. And that's a city girl, right? Let's talk about the dangers of living this city girl lifestyle. Like dating like excessively and, you know, not ever truly committing yourself to one person, right? Let's assume that Lori Harvey is a city girl. I am not going to make any more disclaimers after this point, okay? We're assuming the narrative that the world is going with. This is my response to the narrative that is created about her, okay? The problem with this mentality is that you keep thinking you can do better. Lori Harvey is a beautiful girl. There are a lot of beautiful women, so that is not anything to be, you know, praised, but she is a beautiful woman. And there's an analogy that I can't really remember how it goes, but it's like, let's say this, we've got a woman, she's in the house with different levels, right? And the game is like, okay, on level one, you meet a guy, he's got a house, he's got a good job, he's got a car. And she looks at him, she's like, oh, he's cute, blah, blah, blah. And the host says, oh, okay, so you can stick with him or you can uh, go up another level and see if you like that person better. So she says, mm, I'll take my chances and I'll go up and I'll go up to the next level. And the next guy in the next level is like, he's got a job, he's got a car, he's got a house, he owns a business, he's uh, financially stable and he is ready to settle down. And she looks at him and she's like, oh, he's really my type. I really like him. Mm, yeah, he's kind of cute. Mm, yeah, he's not six foot six so I think I can do better and I think I can actually find my type if I keep going up and then the host says well you've only got four more floors are you sure you want to go up and she says you know what I'll take my chances I will go up and basically she keeps on going up going up going up going up until she gets to the final level which is I guess the idea of perfection and there's nobody there and we've seen so many women who are highly desirable women who men have praised from you know Halle Berry Megan Fox you know Megan Good Pamela Anderson Kim Kardashian Brittany Renner Amber Rose like we've seen in the media these women that these men praise but what do they all have in common 10 years 15 years later all unmarried all unhappy <laughs> 
ultimately. And just because you can have success in one area of your life, most women, we want to be in love. To most women, the idea of success is your being completely honest with yourself is to be happily, happily, happily married. That is a dream for most women. And I think the older that you get is the more that you realise. But then you keep on picking and you pick and you pick and you pick and you pick until you pick shit. That's a that's a, a Caribbean saying. You pick and you pick and you pick until you pick shit. So what you end up with is trash. And so someone like Lori Harvey is blessed and cursed at the same time to have so many options. Women that don't have the beauty or the attractiveness of Lori Harvey may be like, oh, she has so many people to choose from. But one, there's an illusion of options because as much as many men want you, it's very rare that the man that you want wants you back. Very rare. Or you meet someone that does want you, but they're just not ready to commit, right? And so having standards and having preferences are good, but you can meet a man that checks all of those boxes. Perfect. But if he's not ready to settle down and commit to you only, there's nothing you can do about it. And that's what we found with a lot of these women. They feel that they've got the quote unquote perfect guy. And then they they realise that this guy is not, he doesn't want you like that. He likes you, he'll play with you, but he's not going to commit to you. And a lot of women become jaded and hurt when they finally choose, they finally pick one and he does you dirty absolutely breaks you and I think one thing that Laurie has to understand is that she's not going to be young forever and it's something that you guys have to understand too you're not going to be young forever you're not going to be in your prime forever for example Kim Kardashian was highly highly sought after in her heydays after the sex tape she was heavily desired by a lot of black men and so she was at her prime then as you know over the time bad relationship to bad relationship bad relationship divorce to divorce to divorce to divorce to divorce men don't see kim kardashian in the way that they used to see her she now sees that her options are very few and so Lori is hot right now i give it to her she's hot right now but i'm sorry but she does not have the star potential the same power as someone kim kardashian has managed to forge away from her public relationship with a man. Kim Kardashian was smart enough to know, yeah, I may use these public relationships to promote my brand, but I don't see Lori Harvey having that same business savviness to leverage that because she has a skincare line, but she doesn't really promote it like that. She doesn't strike me as a businesswoman. And so I feel like she wants to be kept. Steve Harvey's her dad, he spoiled her. She's not used to really hustling and working like Kim Kardashian and her family has that hustle. Even Kylie Jenner, they have that hustle. I don't see Lori Harvey being that hustle based. I think she likes to be in a relationship. And it's so interesting that her value goes up depending on who she's in a relationship with. And I would really hate as a woman to have my value attached to whoever I'm dating. That's not a flex. It's not a vibe. You want to be able to stand 10 toes on your own feet. Lori needs to know that this is her prime right now and the time to lock it down be right now. If she wants to lock it down, she'll lock it down on damn it just right now. Because I don't... And this might be really bad. I don't see it get any better from here. Because after this relationship fails, it's not going to have the same appeal. They'll be like, oh, Lori's in a new relationship with this person. Nobody's going to care. Like, she's got into that point where it's like, it's laughable now. Before she was mysterious and it was like, oh yeah, Lori really doing it. Now it's just like, after Damson, if it goes down, like, if it goes down from that, I honestly don't see Lori Harvey being talked about in a positive light. I mean, she's already not being talked about in a positive light when it comes to men. However, I think women are going to be like, oh, sis, like, I don't want your Problem. And Lori Harvey is going to be beautiful her whole life. Look at her mother. However, on the dating market, because it is a market, you can lose your value. You can lose your value if you are seen to be dating and dating and dating and dating all these different men. And I know women don't want to hear that, that they can lose their value. You can lose your value, not your intrinsic value, but your value on the dating market. You have to remain exclusive and have some mystery about you, especially if you live in a city like London. Everybody knows everybody. If everybody knows that you date this person, this person, this person, this person, you are not going to be taken seriously with men. They're going to be attracted to you, yes, but that attraction is only going to lead to sex. Just because a man's attracted to you doesn't mean he wants to make you his wife. And if you want to be viewed as a wife, you cannot be moving like a whore. I said it. Even if you're not sleeping with them, even if you're not having sex with them, 
the look of you dating this person and this person and this person is not a good look. And so the man that is actually marriage material, he's not even going to look in that direction. And because men and women don't think the same, women are like, oh, but Laurie's beautiful. She got this. Unless Laurie Harvey wants to marry a woman, there's always going to be women that will want her because women don't see things the way that men see things, right? Unfortunately, on the dating market, men determine what is valuable. When Meek Mill said, I got Laurie Harvey on my wish list. That shot her stock all the way up. They were like, mmm, Lori. I need me some Lori. I did not know who Lori Harvey was until that song. That shot her value straight up. Just as your value can go up in a dating market, it can also go down. So don't lose your value in this dating market. Tweet that and at me. And for those of you who disagree with me and say, oh, Lori Harvey will always have a man. Or you have to understand that having men to sleep with you and having men to commit to you are two different things. If every man had the opportunity to sleep with Lori Harvey, they would. But everyone is not rushing to marry Lori Harvey. And the thing about men and why I say that men control what is valuable, because these men will gas you up and they will tear you down. The same way Meek Mill will say he wanted Lori Harvey on his wish list, or the same way that he was tweeting about her being a pass around. And that's definitely because he's definitely jealous that he didn't get opportunity. However, if men can build you up, they can tear you down. And it's sad how women in the media are only seem to only be validated by their proximity to men. And when I look at all the women that are highly desired, it's because of a man. Think about it. Aside from the women that have their own talent, let's say a J-Lo or a Beyonce, you know what I mean? Whether they're an entertainer, they're in the limelight, actresses, actors, you know, public figures or whatever. Women are not deemed desirable to other women until a man who is highly esteemed gives her the cosign. Before you disagree, think about it. And now all the other men want to get with her because men don't necessarily care about the woman. They care about how they look to other men. I have literally heard men say, if a woman sleeps with a man that is on a financially higher level than him, that very woman is placed on a pedestal in his eyes because the other man had her. And that man wants to feel like he's on the same level with that man, even though he's not. It has nothing to do with the woman. It's men and their ego. Men are using women to compete with each other. It is all a game. I don't even have to drop examples. You know what I'm talking about. If we look at influencers, Jada Wada, Ari Fletcher, India Royale, these other women who have these huge following of women and are looked at as influencers, not because they're more beautiful than the average person, but because this rapper gave them the cosign. And women, these women, his followers, want to be like this woman, not because of the woman herself, but because of the man who chose her. I'm going to let that sit. So it's the same with men. I've literally heard that if a man finds out that the last person you slept with was a bum, he loses respect for you. Imagine that. And as toxic as that is, it's real. Men are competing with other men for women. It's not about the woman. So when we look at these celebrity men and who they're choosing, don't for a second think it has anything to do with these women. It's about their own ego and that's why these men like to turn around and say i made you because they really did not as a human being but they made their persona they look at karuchi chris brown put her on the map gave her a career so unfortunately men determine the value in the dating market and so the best thing that you can do to win is to remain exclusive Another consequence of living this city girl lifestyle is that the more you date is the more emotionally unavailable you get. And the reason why you get emotionally unavailable is because you are constantly putting your heart out there and you're constantly being hurt. And that's how people, men and women, turn into savages when they keep on putting their heart out there, they meet the next person and now they're guarded. Now their guard is all the way up. And the other person who may have come into a relationship open-hearted gets the repercussions 
of the last relationship you was in. So that new person never gets the fullness of who you are. They get the hurt version of you, the guarded version of you. And we know that you can't be in a relationship with someone who is guarded. And so when you're guarded, check out my last video, I explain it to a T in that video. When you're guarded, you are not being authentically yourself. So the person can't really connect with you. And like I said, like Damson Idris is in the prime of his career. He's not looking to settle down. And no matter how beautiful Lori Harvey is, if that's what she decides she wanted with him, he would not be able to give her what she wanted. You could be a 10 out of 10 woman, but if that man is not ready to settle down, forget about it. He's just going to mess up any good relationship if he's not ready to settle down and vice versa. And so the last thing that I will say, and this is not a prophecy, but more so a warning, and it's not a warning to Lori Harvey, because she's probably not even watching this. If you aspire to be like her, if you follow in her footsteps, she's going to meet a man that she is utterly in love with. Someone that breaks down these walls, which I don't think is any man's responsibility, but breaks down those walls, makes her vulnerable. And she's going to finally give her heart to that person. And for whatever reason, he's not ready for it, for her. It's going to ruin her because you can't sow, as in sow, reaping and sowing. You cannot sow a city girl life and expect a good relationship out of it. You sow a good life, a good lifestyle, where you're remaining exclusive, you're dating with intention, you're looking at the red flags, and you're only committing to a person who's ready and to a person that you're compatible with. That will reap a good relationship. You cannot sow a city girl lifestyle and expect good. You just can't. Guys, me again. Remember to check out Skin and Me. All the information is in my description box below. And use my code BRINI to get your first daily dose for just three pounds. 50. Hit the link in my description box below. So guys, that is my warning to you young women who think that Lori Harvey is goals. Is Lori Harvey goals? No, she's not goals. She's a young woman trying to figure it out like the rest of us. I personally don't think that she's going about it the right way, but who am I? I'm not her parents. Her dad, Steve Harvey, for goodness sake, he should be giving her all the advice. In the absence of her saying anything, people have created a narrative about her that I think is a lot bigger than who she is. She strikes me as a sweet girl, but I don't think that the hype around her is justified. I think she's a pretty girl, but there's a lot of pretty women out there. I think she's allowed people to create an image about her. And I think that's one thing that, I mean, it kind of works in your favor, but also kind of works not in your favor. Because online, it's so easy to, for people to run away in their mind and create an image of you that is not actually true. You kind of box yourself in with that narrative, and then you start to believe your own hype. I don't know what kind of man Lori wants. I don't know what she wants. I don't know if she's ready to settle down. I don't know if she wants to be married. I don't know. If it's just trying to have fun, you can have fun just by dating people. You don't have to commit to them. But she seems to be a relationship girl. It's no coincidence that she's always in relationships with men around the time of her birthday. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Oh. Happy birthday to And the, what few weeks of following month is Valentine's Day. It seems to be that. I mean, it's very smart. Get in a relationship with someone before your birthday and then end it after Valentine's Day. But she's getting all the gifts. So if you see the pattern with her and all the other guys, birthday, Valentine's, holidays, all that kind of stuff, just the same thing, rinse and repeat. But I feel like you're going to hurt yourself that way. And even if it's just becoming emotionally unavailable, because I don't have space in my heart for more than one man. Even going forward, I don't, I honestly don't want to date anybody. I think dating is boring for me right now. I'm ready to meet my match, my Adam and I don't think I have to date a bunch of people to define that person. So that's my spiel on the Lori Harvey situation. Let me know what you think. What do you think? Is Lori Harvey winning? Answer the question. If you think yes, then tell me why. If you think no, then tell me why. Let's start a conversation in the comments below. I always read all of your comments, so make sure you are commenting and liking. Make sure you like. Please like before you comment. Like the video before you lock off, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.